Hi there, welcome to another video from Hegarty Maths. It's Mr. Hegarty here. It's our seventh video on sequences and series. And in this video, we're going to move on to summing n terms of an arithmetic series. So previously, we've talked about um, the nth term of an arithmetic sequence or series, how to find the nth term. Now we're trying to work out how to sum all the terms up to the nth term. Okay, in a previous video, I think video four, I've shown you the formula for the nth term of a sequence or series and the sum to n terms. Can you remember them? I asked you to go away and remember them. Can you remember them? Take a couple of minutes to try and write them down. Pause the video. I'm going to go through in two seconds. With a bit of luck, you've written them down so many times you remember them. The nth term is given by the formula un is equal to a plus n subtract 1 multiplied by d, where a is the first term, d is the common difference, and n is the obviously stands for the nth term. And I sh showed you a little shortcut way how to remember the sum to n terms. Do you remember how I said to remember it? Well, it's very much like this, a plus n subtract 1 d. It's very much like that. Apart from it's two lots of a, and we also have brackets around the whole thing, and we multiply the whole thing by n over 2, our nth term divided by 2. So that is the sum to n. That was just a little check. You could remember those formulae. Now I'm going to try and show you how where they came from. Right, to demonstrate this, I'm going to talk about this chap called Gauss. Gauss, they say, is probably the greatest mathematician of all time. And he was a right pain in the backside to his maths teachers at school because he knew all the answers to all the questions. One day, the maths teacher, to uh, shut up the quite noisy class, asked the class to work out the sum of the numbers 1 to 100. So this series, they wanted them to work out 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 plus dot 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 plus all the way up to 98, plus 99, plus 100. Now, the teacher thought that would keep the class busy for a while so they could just relax, but Gauss immediately put his hand up and he said the answer was 5,050 after literally a couple of seconds. And he did this by a clever mathematical trick, which is going to show us how the formula for the sum of a series actually works. And this is what Gauss did. Gauss said to himself, OK, the teacher has asked me to do 1 add 2 add 3 plus all the way up to 98 plus 99 plus 100. And Gauss in his head might have called this S100, the sum of 100 terms. He thought to himself, you know what, if I rewrote out the sum to 100 terms, let's do it in a different colour, but I wrote it backwards like 100 plus 99 plus 98 plus dot 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 plus three plus two plus one okay he thought if I imagined it that way round and I added the two sums together so if I added this whole equation and added this whole equation I would have two lots of my sum to 100 okay and they would be equal to well have a look at this these two add to 101 these two add to 101 these two add to 101. All the way down to the bottom, these two add to 101, these two add to 101, and these two add to 101. So I would have how many terms? 1, 2, 3, and this is 98, 99, 100. I would have 100 lots of 101. 101 add 101 had 101 100 times. So the sum to 100, two lots of it are this. So one lot of it must be 100 over, uh, if I divide both sides by 2, 100 times 101 divided by 2. He knew 100 times 101 was 10,100, and 10,100 divided by 2, he would know quickly in his head that that was 5,050. And that is how Gauss worked this out instantaneously in his head. And that's how we're going to derive the formula for any general arithmetic sequence, or series, should I say. So I'm going to show you how we're going to do this when it's not 1 or 2 or 3, where it's a plus a plus uh, d, etc., like how we write out the terms of a series in general. 
Okay, so let's show you how to do this in general then. Right, here we go. This can be quite complicated, but let's give it a go anyway. First thing I need you to remember is what's the nth term of an arithmetic sequence or series. It's a plus n subtract 1d. a is the first term, d is the common difference. Okay, let's try and write down sn. Let's try and write down the series that's added together. The first term is a. Right? I'm even going to write a plus 0d here just to make it maybe a bit easier. The next one is a plus 1d. Okay? The, first, uh, the second term. Plus the third term is a plus 2d. Remember this is the first, the second, the third. Plus dot dot dot. Okay, let's go... Um, Let's think about what the last term is. That might make it easier. The last term, or the nth term, okay, is a plus n minus 1d, isn't it? So the one before that must be a plus n subtract 2d, mustn't it? So that's the first term, the second term, the third term, and I've gone up to the n minus 1th term, the one before n, and the nth term. And I've written it out. That was like how Gauss wrote out 1 plus 2 plus 3 dot 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 plus 99 plus 100. What did Gauss do next? Well, he wrote the thing out again, Sn, but he wrote it backwards. So he wrote this term first. So he wrote a plus n minus 1d. Plus he wrote a plus n minus 2d. Plus, and the next one would be a plus n subtract 3d, wouldn't it? plus dot 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 plus. Now, this, you, in the second last term, you'd actually have the second term. So you'd have a plus 1d. And the last one, you'd have a on its own, a plus 0ds. Then Gauss added up the two lines, and he added them up to get two lots of the sum he was looking for. To, so two lots of the sum to n. Now, let's add a, we've just got an a here, to this thing a plus n minus 1d, and we've only got one a there. So clearly we're going to have, if we add these two items, we're going to have 2a plus still the n minus 1d. I'm just going to do the last one to show you. This is easy as well. That add that is again going to be clearly 2a plus n minus 1d, isn't it? Now, the in-between terms also add to this. Let's just double check why that's true, but trust me they do. We'll have an a there and an a there, which will give me a definitely a 2a, so plus a 2a. Now, this bit's just a tiny bit more tricky, but it's quite easy. I've got n minus 1ds, and I add 1d. So that'll, uh, sorry, I've got n minus 2ds, and I add a d. So that'll give me plus n minus 1d. And all of these are actually 2a plus n minus 1, lots of d, okay? So, how many of these sums do I got? I'm adding the same thing together, 1 times 2 times 3 times, all the way up n times. So, twice my sum to n must be n lots of 2a plus n subtract 1d, wasn't it? So, therefore, dividing both sides by 2, sn must be equal to n, I'm just going to just divide this n by 2, n over 2, 2a plus n subtract 1 multiplied by d. And that is where this formula that I asked you to remember before actually comes from. It's from a Gauss little trick to work out the formula. Now one more tiny thing just to point out. I could split this 2a up into a plus a. And if I did that, just watch what's going to happen. sn is still n over 2, a plus a plus n minus 1d. Now look at this here. a is the first term, and a plus n minus 1d, well that's the last term, the nth term. Look at it, it's the same as the nth term. So, I could rewrite this formula, sn, also as n over 2, the first term, plus capital L for the last term. And sometimes that formula is better to use. Now I'm going to show, tell you when each formula is best to use. This formula here, you're going to use this when you know n, n is given, when you're told the first term, and you're told 
how uh, the common difference. You're going to use this uh, one here. It's the same formula, but sometimes it's easier to use this when you know n. You know a, and somebody's told you the last term of the sequence. You also know the last term, and it's just quicker to use that one instead of working out uh, what um, uh, in case you weren't told the common difference or something like that, or how many terms you've got. So sometimes that might be easier. But both of them are essentially the same thing. So going back to formally, we need to know that there, we've got to learn that, we've got to learn that, but also this is equivalent to n over 2, a plus the last term. So let's learn that one as well. Okay, now, as I've said before, if that has gone totally over your head, that algebra there, don't panic too much. You don't have to regurgitate that um, proof in the exam, but I do think it is really cool and useful for you to know. What you do need to know is that formula off the top of your head and how to use it. So let's do some examples. It says, find the sum, so we know we're using the sum formula, of the first 100 odd numbers. Whenever they give a question like this, I write out what the sum is. So Sn, S100 even, the sum of the first 100 odds, is 1 plus 3 plus 5 plus dot 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 up to the 100th one. So that's the first one, the second term, the third term, all the way up to the 100th one. Now I don't have to work out the 100th one to, to solve this problem. What I can state is what I know. The first thing is, I know the formula Sn is equal to n over 2 brackets 2a plus n subtract 1d. I also know information in my question. I want the first 100 terms. So I know that n is equal to 100. I've got 100. I also know the first term a is equal to 1. And I know they're going up in a common difference of 2 each time. So I know that d is equal to 2. That's all I need to substitute into this formula. So let's work out S100. S100 is 100 divided by 2, brackets, 2 times a. So that would be 2 times 1 plus 100 take away 1, which is 99 times 2. So S100 is going to equal, well, 100 divided by 2 is 50. And let's work this out here. 99 multiplied by 2 is 198. Add 2 times 1, which is 2. That will be 200. And 50 times 200 is 10,000. So the sum of the first 100 odd numbers is 10,000. And we are done for the first example. Right, let's try example 2. We are asked to find the sum of the following series. 5, add 1, add negative 3, add negative 7, dot, 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 for 14 terms. First thing I'm going to do is state what I know. I know a is equal to 5. I know that d, well, the, they're going down in 4, so d must be negative 4. And I am told in the question that I have 14 terms, so I know n is 14. I'm then going to state my formula. Sum of 14 Right, let's always write s of n first. s of n is n over 2, 2a plus n subtract 1 multiplied by d, right? So s14 must be 14 over 2, 2 multiplied by 5 plus 14 take away 1, which is 13 multiplied by negative 4. So s14, well, 14 divided by 2 is 7, so we can write that there. 2 times 5 is 10, 13 uh, multiplied by negative 4, or 12 multiplied by 4 is 48, so 13 multiplied by 4 is 52, 13 multiplied by negative 4 must be negative 52, and therefore S14 would be 7 multiplied by 10, take away negative uh, 52, which is negative uh, 42, so S14 is 7 multiplied uh, by negative 42. And 7 multiplied by negative 42, well, I know 7 multiplied by 40 is equal to 280. So I know that 7 multiplied by 2 is equal to 14. So I know that 7 multiplied by 42 is equal to 
294. So therefore, 7 multiplied by negative 42 must be negative 294. And there we go. I have my answer, the sum to 14. Okay, so the next example, we are asked to find the following. We are asked to find how many terms, so they're asking us for n, in the following series to make this sum work. So 5 at 8 at 11 and 14, they're the terms. How many of these type of terms do I have to have until the sum of the series adds up to 670? Let's think what they want. They want me to work out n, right? But what they told me, they've told me a is 5. They have told me d, the common difference, is going up in 3s, right? So d is 3. And they've also told me the sum to n, the sum of all these n terms, however, whatever n is, is 670. So what we can do is let's always, as always, state our formula for Sn. Sn is n over 2, brackets, 2a plus n subtract 1 multiplied by d. Sn is 670, so let's try and solve this equation. 670 is equal to, we still don't know n, so n over 2, we have to write it like that. 2a, or 2 times 5, plus n minus 1 times d. Now d is 3. I'm going to write that 3 in front, so I'm going to write 3n minus 1. Now let's do a bit of tidying inside. 670 is equal to n over 2. 10 plus, let's multiply out the bracket, 3n take away 3. And let's tidy it up even a bit more. 670 is n over 2. 10 take away 3 is 7, so this could be written as 3n add 7. OK, now I've got a divide by 2 on the right-hand side. It would be really handy if I multiplied both sides of the equation by 2, just to get rid of that. And then I would have the following. 1340 would equal n, brackets, 3n add 7. Because remember, I'm just multiplying by 2 just to get rid of this divide by 2. Now I can multiply out the brackets, 1340 would equal 3n squared plus 7n. An alarm bell should be ringing, this is a quadratic, quadratic equation. And I can only solve them when it's equal 0. So I'm going to subtract 1340 of both sides, 0 equals 3n squared plus 7n, subtract 1340. And I'm going to try and solve that. Now, in the exam, they would almost they would almost never, ever, ever get you to factorise something with huge numbers like this. It's just too unfair. I would just tell you straight away what that factorises to. So I wouldn't stress about this. The exam questions wouldn't be that harsh. It would factorise as follows. It's certainly got to be a 3n and an n, OK? And we're trying to multiply up to 1,340. And it factorises as follows. I'm going to admit there, I looked the factorisation up on my calculator. This would never come up that harsh in, in, in an exam, so don't worry. But that, but that gives us n is negative 67 over 3 from this one, which we can ignore because we know n must be, well, firstly positive and a whole number, or n is 20. So n is 20 is work. How many terms? There are 20 terms. OK, and that's it for this particular video. Um, I'm going to do one more video on summing series with an exam style question, but I hope you found this video useful as an introduction. Thanks for watching.